Hello, uh, my name is Kate Martin and I'm a freelance educator and curator and this is Rosita McKenzie. Who is most people know me, I think. <laughs> I've been around for a long time, blind photographer and disability equality educator. Um, our presentation is about one of the projects that we're working on together at the moment. Um, Rosita and I are actually working on a couple of projects, but we're going to present this one uh, through the Looking Glass Dimly which is a collaborative project between myself um, and some of you might be familiar with Contemporary Art Exchange, which is my kind of curatorial brand, so to speak. Uh, and of course, Rosita and another blind photographer who lives in Melbourne um, by the name of Andrew Follows. So um, I thought what we'd do in this very, very short amount of time is just quickly go over the bare bones of the project to give you an idea. Uh, and then perhaps maybe Rosita can talk about it from her perspective as an artist involved in this project. Um, I guess first and foremost, one of the things to say about this project is that obviously today we've been hearing a lot about organisations and institutions and how they can provide accessibility to uh, people who have disabilities. But I guess our focus is perhaps more on artists who have disabilities and trying to create an environment whereby artists with disabilities can engage in the same practice as everybody else and the same opportunities as everybody else. Um, and as I'm sure a lot of you are aware of with limited funds, institutions aren't always available, uh, they, they don't always have the opportunities available to offer lots of people with disabilities. So often they have to find those opportunities themselves and this is one such way that we hope we've done that. Um, this is just a photograph of Andrew um, and his guide dog, Eamon, and they're going to be coming over in August. So we're hoping that Edinburgh community will give him a nice warm welcome. And really the project started off with Andrew um, through a contact in Melbourne that I had. Um, he was looking for a residency um, in the UK and um, we basically created such an opportunity just through emailing each other, Skyping with each other um, and trying to build up something from nothing. And eventually we brought Rosita on board. Um, I had known her through various different workshops that um, I'd helped uh, run in different institutions. And I knew she was a woman who had very good contacts and <laughs> knew a lot about um, perhaps an area that I wasn't that familiar with working in, I guess, disability arts, for lack of a better describing mm -hmm. word. Um, so we brought Rosita in, on board, mainly for advice, but then it, it quickly eventuated that Andrew and Rosita found out that they shared very, very similar goals, both short term and long term, not just about exhibiting their work and getting it out there, but also about accessibility for audiences and also about um, some other goals, which I think I'll leave Rosita to explain <laughs> in a bit. Um, but just back to the project. The project consists of, as I said, a residency for Andrew. He'll be here for a month in August. Um, and the idea is to have a joint exhibition with Rosita um, at the old ambulance depot. Um, Andrew will also go up to the Scottish Highlands and do a little uh, trip up there to create a new body of work that he can then take back to Melbourne. He has an exhibition planned for when he returns as well. Uh, and the other part of the project uh, is a sort of program of public events where Andrew and Rosita will work together collaboratively to create some photography workshops um, for both sighted and non-sighted people and also we'll be doing some artist talks as well and some other events. Um, this image that you see behind me, this is a photograph. This is one of Andrew's photographs. I don't think this one in particular will be in the exhibition. I've just um, got a few examples of both Andrew and Rosita's work just to give you an idea. Um, one of the things that came about through the various discussions that we've had over the last year or so is about things like the theme of the exhibition and what is it that they were trying to do. Um, Andrew had been looking at um, bushfires in Victoria, in Australia, and the devastating effect that bushfires had on local communities. And um, he developed a body of work that looked at that. And it was something that Rosita was also quite interested in. So then that inspired Rosita to start looking into that herself. Obviously, it was going to be quite difficult to, to um, blind artists not knowing each other's work, working in two completely different hemispheres of the world. And so the bushfire idea really um, inspired me. And at the same time as J Kate and I were having these discussions, um, there was um, uh, wildfires 
taking place in the Highlands uh, last year. And I really wanted to get up there and, and photograph uh, the, um, not just the damage, but you know, to see, to see what the effect was um, locally on the, on, the, um, on the wildlife and everything else. So that was one aspect of the, the show that I thought I could, I could um, uh, n not mirror, but um, reflect. And also, Andrew um, was interested in night skies, so I thought, well, I I would try with a, try very hard to uh, photograph night skies here in Edinburgh or in Scotland. So we have we have the Australian um, perspective and also the Scottish perspective, and um, I'm still working on those. I have to say. Um, some of, some of the work may be um, previewed in an, a show I'm having at Leith, uh, in Leith next month at the Coburg House, Coburg House Gallery called Above and Below. And if anyone would be interested to come along there, we'll be very pleased to see you. Um, that's the collaboration with a sighted photographer, Moena Kearsley. Um, but the big thing is that the work has to be accessible, so there's challenges there. Um, especially for display, uh, which Andrew's work hasn't necessarily been as accessible in the past. Um, but also, uh, we, um, I wanted to be involved with this project because I've cherished a dream for a very long time about um, encouraging other blind photographers. And I've done work here in Scotland and the UK I've also worked with, uh, uh, I have a um, work showing in the un um, Sight Unseen exhibition that is travelling the globe uh, since 19, uh, 2010. Um, but this opportunity of working with an Australian blind photographer, I thought really fitted into that, that um, remit and everything that I want to do because it means ex extending the global network of blind photographers, and um, as I say, it just it just fitted in with lots of my aims and ambitions. Which was, I guess, again, one of those long-term goals that Andrew also had as well, and we found out by chance that that was something that he was very keen to do, to establish a kind of international network for visually impaired photographers. Mm -hmm. Um, just, I just wanted to yeah. tell everyone what this slide is, in yes. case you're wondering. Um, this slide shows a, a photograph, one of Andrew's night photographs. He calls them his Star Trail photographs. Um, and it's obviously quite interesting the way he's captured the sky there, so using a, a, a long exposure mm -hmm. technique to grab that. Um, and this is one of Rosita's nighttime photographs that you can see here. Um, it's not very good in this lit room, but... You'll just have to come along to the exhibition okay, at Coburg yeah. House to have a look. Okay, so I'm afraid you've That's nearly used up your 10 minutes. That's so fine. thank you very much, both of you. Thank you. Uh, for a round of applause. Can I just um, quickly say... I think, I don't, know, I don't know if there are any immediate questions. Um, you've got a couple of minutes if anyone ha has anything that you're burning to ask. Otherwise, I think you're both going to be around for the rest of the yes. day. And if you wanted to copy down any of the links, the top one there, that's our crowdfunding website. We are fundraising for Through the Looking Glass Dimly at the moment. So if you could retweet, forward to friends, anybody, um, you can donate as much as £400 or £10. <laughs> it would really help. Um, <laughs> and there's more information. Or more. Or more, 